Pop Culture is here. I'm with Niall, here to talk about right. Blockpocalypse. So tell us a little about how Blockpocalypse got started. So Blockpocalypse started uh, last year at Global Game Jam. Uh, the theme was, what do we do now? And we were like, I guess that kind of makes sense for an apocalypse style game. And we kind of were thinking about like, you know, different team exercises and like, you know, what do we do now, like a team game. And then eventually we kind of came to this idea of like stacking blocks on top of each other. And from then on we've just, yeah, sort of created a party game out of it. It was initially like an infinite runner and they were like, nah, like there's so much more that we can do with this concept and throwing blocks and stuff like that. So yeah, we added, um, you know, several different modes. We're going to be adding more apocalypses in the future, like a zombie apocalypse, uh, alien infestation. Um, just like really mix up the gameplay. So the initial idea, did that start as the survival mode and then you started to have these mini games as well? Is that how it worked? Yes, yeah, survival was the initial mode. It was just like the lava rising from the bottom of the level and there was just infinite platforms. And it was just a bit of competition to see how far you can get. And how many levels are there in survival mode? Um, in survival mode, we've probably got about 30 or 40 different like sections, but they're stitched together randomly. Oh, okay, so no matter how many times you play it, it's never the same sequence of yeah. order? No, well, within, you know, yeah. reason, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and we're constantly kind of adding more to it. And that's how we want to set up the same with like a zombie apocalypse or, you know, um, alien infestation is have that same kind of system. Except like alien infestation would be on a space station. And, you know, you're going to outrun like the alien swarm that's invading it. And then we can have like low gravity areas or jetpack areas. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, where did the character designs come from? So it's obviously got a very retro 8-bit kind of feel to it. Um, you said that you previously worked on mobile games. Is that the aesthetic you brought across? What kind of the mobile games were they? Uh, none of the mo well, only one of our mobile games was kind of close to 8-bit. Um, our first mobile game was a game called Tasty Fish, okay. and it was just like little fish in an ocean trying to survive. Uh, then we did like uh, one called Super Muzzle Flash, which was like a, like a shooting gallery in the dark. You could only see every time you shot. Really? Uh, and then we did a like an escape, an like, infinite runner called Breakout Blur. But like none of those were really quite close to this aesthetic. I think um, since it was a game jam, we chose pixel art because it was just easy to do. Like. Uh, like even the characters, they've only got two sprites. So it's just the regular sprite and the sprite holding. And then we, we were just being cheap at the time. And then they added little tweening animations for the running. And then we we're like, it's actually kind of adorable. Let's like <laughs> keep that. And then we can just add millions of characters. So yeah, yeah the aesthetic was more kind of born out of just the wanting to have a polished game by the end of um, the game jam. Sure. And with the characters themselves, uh, was that one person, or did you guys just brainstorm all the things you love? and put it into the game. How did you come up with the cookie characters? Just brainstorming. So we've got two artists, um, and you know, they can burn through these like characters really quickly. And we started off with like regular townspeople, and then people kept choosing the wacky zany characters, so we're like, we're just gonna add lots of zany characters, like, you know, werewolf or freedom bird, or, you know. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got a team called the Glitter Squad, and it's uh, Sprinkles, Sparkles, Glitter... And, and Kevin. Kevin, yeah. yeah. Kevin Very cool, Kevin. Um, so how many of you are in the team? And like, how long did it take from start to finish? There are three of us in the team. Um, I'm the programmer and we've got two artists. From start to finish, it's a bit hard to say. Um, we started Global Game Jam last year and then it was kind of on and off while we were working on contracts and doing other projects. And then we got a Film Victoria grant earlier this year and that allowed us to work on it full time for six months. So, yeah, on and off for the past like year and a half. And then a lot of times we dedicate to like doing online multiplayer, which is still like in beta, but you know, we're sort of powering through that and that's getting better every day as well. So what's it like working in Australia? Do you think it has advantages or disadvantages for the gaming industry? I think the advantages for us has been the arcade. Like working out the arcade in that shared collaborative space has been really good. Um, uh, the Bell, uh, Victorian government has been very pro games, which has been fantastic. Um, you know, you can see if you kind of look around, you'll see like the, the pink on the top of the sides, the pink on our sides, like proudly made in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vic government are really behind it. So Victoria especially has been really good to make games in. Um, yeah, so the I think the main drawback is like for like press outreach is a bit harder. Like, you know, we don't have like some of the like the kind of like rock paper shotgun or anything coming through. 
Um, that's where we actually would have to, you know, go overseas to PAX Prime yeah. or like, you know, PAX East. But otherwise, like, I think it's it's good, and like the game scene in Melbourne is rising. You know, even the press is like rising with this. Like, so they're all kind of banding together and coming up. So it is available on Steam right now. Is that correct? Yes, it's available on Steam for uh, ten US dollars, whatever that is in Australian. What? Console, console. We um, the end is goal a console. Is goal. The end goal is console. Yeah. So uh, Steam early access we wanted to use as a way to curate our content. And you know, be like, oh, yeah, this apocalypse, this apocalypse. Maybe this apocalypse wasn't so good. It didn't test well with the Steam users. We'll leave that out. So over the year, we want to keep adding content, and then once we've finalised that content, that's when we want to move to console. And, yeah. and maybe for people who are kind of working on their own at home, doing programming and things like that, how did that step go from having a game completed to bringing it to a platform like Steam, where it's global? Is that was that part of through the, the university, or how did that work? Becoming a full proper full fledged game on the Steam. So we went through uh, green light last year. Okay. So this time last year we had our green light campaign, and that's how we got onto Steam. So um, we're an independent company, like we haven't uh, we haven't paired with the university or anything like that. So yeah, uh, anyone can pretty much set up an account and like uh, put a game up on green light, and then you've just got to get through that voting process, get into the top hundred, and then get approved. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. This has been Block Apocalypse.